So this was it. First method, middle term breaking. This is a quadratic equation. Second method was completing square. Third method was quadratic formula. We were mainly interested in quadratic formula due to B square minus 4AC, which is known as discriminant. So if you follow your book, these are few examples solving quadratic equations. It says solve the following equation, which is x square minus 2x minus 15 equals to 0. There is no restriction according to this. So you are allowed to use any method. And this is the same case as you will face in exam. x square minus 2x minus 15. So let's do this. x squared minus 2x minus 15 is equals to 0. I'm going for middle term breaking first. So we must get a product of x square into 15 is fifteen x square and sum must be product must be fifteen x square, sum must be minus two x. So thinking of two factors, I am choosing five and three. X square minus fifteen lies where they were. Two numbers must be minus five x and plus three x. Just check if you add these two, do you get minus 2x? And when you multiply these two, we get negative 15. So these are our two factors. Taking out common from first two, this is x minus 5. Taking out common from second two, this is x minus 5 again. Having these two brackets same is a guarantee that you are making no mistake x plus 3 times x minus 5 equals to 0. So x is equals to minus 3 and x is equals to 5. These are your two solutions. And the main word which we will use in A levels is roots. These are the roots of this equation. Any confusion? I have no. Okay. So, I need you to try this before we move on. This is C part 6x square plus 13x minus 5. I'll share this book with you as well. So, we can have a track how much course is covered. Take half a minute and try this question. We have three students and only one is responding. I should be assuming that others are understanding this. Yes. Okay. Take half a minute and try this question. Anyone, could you complete it? Uh, I was confused with the, the six x squared. Do I divide everything else by six? If I want only uh, one as uh, uh, one next to x squared. So what are the middle terms which you chose? No, I was uh, first uh, wondering about if I have to get rid of the six, the, the coefficient of x squared. 
Do I have to get rid of that or I can just... That's right, but that is not necessary. If you will divide this with 6, you will get two fractions as well. So that is not a compulsion. 6, 5 times is negative 30x square. Product must be negative 30x square. And sum must be 13x. So we're looking for our factors. And we see that 1 times 30 is 30. Uh, yes. Run, run. Um, I think I got my two roots. And what are I also those? completed the question. I got one over three and minus five over two. Okay, let's let's same. check. We get the same answer. Okay, two people have same answer, so that would be correct. I'm just discussing with uh, this one of the method. If you ever get stuck, this is one of the way you can do. One into thirty is thirty, but adding these two, we get thirty-one, and subtracting these two, we get twenty-nine. So these are not our roots. Then it is two into fifteen. Adding these two is 17, but subtracting these two is 15. So this could be one of the answer. So if we write plus 15x and minus 2x, subtracting these two, we get 13. Multiplying these two, we get negative 30x square. Now taking out common from first two, then last two. So this is 3x. You're left with 2x plus 5. Minus 2, uh, minus 1. This is 2x plus 5. Again, two brackets, same. So 3x minus 1 into 2x plus 5. And x is equals to 1 by 3. And x is equals to minus 5 by 2. So these are the roots. That's right. So this is again O levels. Let us proceed. These were the quadratic equations. You can solve them with either midterm breaking or any other method. Now look at this question. It says 2x minus 3 whole square equals 25. We do not need to change it into quadratic form. We can take square root on both sides. Any disagreement? No. So if you encounter a question like this. This is 2x minus 3 whole squared equals 25. Taking square root on both sides is 2x minus 3 equals plus 5, 1, 2x minus 3 equals negative 5, second. So 2x equals 8, x equals 4. The other is 2x is equals to minus 2, x equals minus 1. These are few examples to practice, few questions to practice. And coming forward to our main task. This is the other method completing square, which will give you the same answers. And these are the graphs which we were discussing yesterday. Quadratic graphs, sketches. Question says, sketch the graph of the following equations for each graph show the coordinates of points where the graph crosses the coordinate axis and write down the coordinate of turning point as i stated yesterday that completing square form is something we will be discuss discussing in depth is because of this we can sketch the graph using that if the question is y equals x square minus 6x plus 8 do you remember we used to solve it like this? We had values of x and then we had values of y. We took minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then we had the corresponding values of y. Do you remember this? Yeah. Yes. But now we will be doing it in the other way. This was plotting. Now we are to sketch. For sketching, we need completing square form. So y equals x square minus 6x plus 8. First step is make the coefficient of x square as 1, which is already 1. Second step is this. Coefficient of x, half of it, 
and square of it, then add and subtract. So I will add three square and subtract three square. Whatever the coefficient of X is, half of it squared, added, squared, subtracted. Then we close these three. This is X minus three whole square. What did we do? We did the reverse of this algebraic formula a minus b whole square, which was a square minus 2ab plus b square. We did the reverse of this. We copied a, we copied the negative sign, we copied this b and whole square. Okay. So a was x, b was 3 and negative sign because of minus 6. Then minus 9 plus 8. This becomes x minus 3 whole square minus 1. This is the completing square form from O levels. Do you remember this? If no, do let me know. We'll practice it. Do you practice it? I'm ready. Okay, right. You remember it. So it's we a bit more complicated when x squared has a coefficient though, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the case. So we'll choose one in that way as well. But uh, do not say that it's complicated. We can say we have one extra step because we always have a calculator with us. It doesn't matter whatever the number is. This way, when you have a coefficient with x square. So first step is one extra step. First step is make the coefficient x square as one. So I'm taking this two out common. This is x square plus two x plus five. It gets a little weird when we have odd numbers because they will be become fractions then. So this was two taking out common. Inside this bracket is the same story. X square plus two X, half of that is one. So plus one square minus one square and plus five. Two carries on X copied, positive sign copied, one copied whole square. So we're done with these three. Next is minus 1 plus 5. And then there is just the simplification. X plus 1 whole square plus 4. Now bring this 2 in. This is 2 times X plus 1 whole square plus 8. So this looks entirely different than the main equation. Why are we doing this? For sketch, we need this. This is very particularly easy. It gives us the turning point. And it tells how the graph would look like. General form. General form is y is equals to a x minus h whole square plus k. Does it look like same? a x minus h whole yes. square plus k. So what is the turning point? Turning point is always h comma k. What does it mean? This is h and you can see this was negative h. It changed into positive h. The sign has been changed. So if I consider the previous question in this case, if I change this sign, this will be minus one and remaining is as it is, it is copied. K was copied as it is. So this is minus one comma eight. I'm going to previous question in this case. We change the sign of age, which becomes three and we copy K as it is three minus one. What is this? This is the turning point. Three comma minus one minus one comma eight and H comma K. Comparing with the general form, I'll meanwhile complete the sketch as well. Now this is X minus one and Y eight. If I just consider this is a sketch, so you don't have to mark everything minus X on left hand side positive 8 goes up. So this is minus 1 comma 8. The other thing, when A is positive, if A is positive, it is a smiley face. If A is negative, it is a sad face. So you can say, pause, just to remember, positive people, they smile and negative people, they are sad. So whenever A is positive, it is a smiley face. Whenever A is negative, it is a sad face. And what actually A is, A is the coefficient of X square. 
in this question, particularly the coefficient of x square is positive 2. Or in your final state, x square, this is positive. Positive means a smiley face. We already had a turning point. So this is our smiley face. The requirement of the question was to label the turning point and any point of intersection. So now this is our point of intersection marked in green. At this point, I am very sure that X is zero and Y is unknown. Any doubts about this point? Coordinate geometry. X is zero and Y is unknown. So when I have X zero, I may use any equation, the main first equation or the last equation. Last equation is always easy because it is simplified. If I use this and I use X zero, Do I get 2 plus 8 equals to 10? So this tells me that my coordinates are 0, 10. This question is complete. Sketching is complete. Let us try a few more questions. Uh, should I choose this negative e part negative x square plus 6x? Plus seven. Y is equals to negative X square plus six X plus seven. First step is making the coefficient of X square as one. So taking out negative one as common, all the sign changes. Next step, whatever the coefficient of X is, this is minus six. So we take half of it plus 3 square minus 3 square minus 7. Negative 1 continues outside closing these 3 copied x copied the negative sign copied the number 3 whole square minus 9 minus 7. Negative 1 3 x minus 3 whole squared minus 16. Now I'm taking this one inside. So this is negative x minus 3 whole square plus 16. So I can tell two things. Firstly, it is a sad face. Secondly, the turning point is anyone would you label the turning point? Turning point is 3, 16. Yes, yeah, who are, am I pronouncing it correctly? Um, yeah, it's 16. Yeah. You may uh, unmute your mic anytime you wish. A better communication will result in better understanding. You can stop me anywhere if there is any confusion or you need to answer ahead. Sir? Yes. Randomly throughout the meeting, your mic keeps cutting out for three to five seconds at a time. So sometimes you don't hear what you say. Uh, so what I need to do is. Uh, I'm sorry, you couldn't get the suggestion. I was just I saying that. Yeah, I think it's Wi-Fi because randomly your mic uh, keeps cutting out. So it seems like you're not talking for us. And then you cut back in. Okay, I'll get it checked. Okay, I'm using a different connection today. Uh, was it fine yesterday? It was fine yesterday. Okay. Yeah. I'll get back to the same connection, inshallah. Okay, for now, uh, this is, I can see two things. One, it is a negative number. So that means it will be a sad face. So rough sketch. A rough sketch. It will be a sad face and the turning point will be 3, comma minus 16. Why I'm saying and why I'm drawing a rough sketch? There is a reason. If I consider this, y axis and x axis if you consider these two 
I am not actually very sure that 1, 2, 3, x3 and y16. This is sad face, but I'm not sure. Either I have to draw it like this blue or green or black. Are you getting the point? I'm very sure that it is sad face. I'm very sure what the turning point is, but I'm not sure where it will cut the y-axis. I have these three options. In the previous question, there was no doubt. There was no doubt that it will cut the y-axis in the positive value. But in this value, so before drawing it, I will check the exact value at y-axis. X is 0. So I'm using this minus 0 minus 3 whole square plus 16. If I solve this, I get minus 9 plus 16, negative 9 plus 16 is 7. Now I'm sure that it will cut the y-axis at positive 7. So final sketch. Turning point is x3, y16, and it cuts the y-axis at 7. So the graph will look like this. This point is x0, y7, and the turning point is 316. Can anyone tell me how will we find these points of intersection where it crosses the x-axis. We can say that this is x comma 0 and x comma 0. Any guesses? How can we find the value of x? Um, do you find the roots? That's right. We have y0. So we have our equation already simplified, which is y equals to negative x minus 3 whole square plus 16. So when y is 0, we have to solve this for the roots. Taking 16 on the other side, x minus 3 whole square equals 16. Square root both sides gives you x minus 3 is equals to 4 and x minus 3 is equals to minus 4. So x is equals to 4 plus 3 which is 7 and x is equals to 3 minus 4 which is minus 1. So we get minus 1 comma 0 and we get 7 comma 0. So the requirement of question was sketch it with labeling all the points of intersection. So point 1 labeled, point 2 labeled, point 3 is labeled and turning points labeled and there's the sketch. Is it clear a little? I have a question. Yes. Can you scroll back up to the completing the? Can you scroll back up to where you were before? Yes. In the document you were writing on. This question or the previous? Uh, no, that, uh, this one. Yes. So. Dean. Did you did you do the square first, then turn that negative, or did you do the minus sign first, then square that for the bracket? For this one in red? Oh uh, no, 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 go down a bit. Uh close to the graph. This? No, uh, just a little bit more. Here. It says minus in bracket zero minus three squared, and then yes. you got minus nine. We we right? first solve. Are the you always bracket. supposed to do the? Are we supposed to do the square first and then turn the bracket the other symbol. That's right. That's right. Minus zero minus three whole squared plus sixteen. So this is minus three inside the bracket plus sixteen. Now square of minus three is plus nine. This negative sign was outside the bracket. So minus into plus is minus 9 plus 16. Then you get plus 7. Oh, okay. I get it.
do you remember b square minus 4ac less than 0? What was this? When it is less than 0? Uh, the roots are not real. Roots are not real. Okay. Roots are not real would also mean that it will not touch the x-axis. We made, we drew, drew this sketch for this equation. 2x square plus 4x plus 10. Let us check if it is true. 2x square plus 4x plus 10. So let's see what b square minus 4 is he has to say about this. b is 4 minus 4, a is 2 and c is 10. This is 16 minus 4 2 times 8, 18 to 10 is 80. So 80 minus 16 is a negative number. is minus 64. Are the things connecting with each other now? When it is not touching the x-axis, the discriminant is negative. That means there are no roots. So when the question will say that the line and the graph are not touching each other, we will use b square minus 4ac less than 0. When the question will say, in this case, just look at this last part. It intersects at two different points. So let's use this equation. Negative x square plus 6 plus 7. Negative x square plus 6 plus 7. Let's see what b square minus 4ac has to say. b is 6 minus 4. a is minus 1. c is 7. 6 square is 36. Minus 4 into minus 1 is plus 4. 7, 4 times is 28. And 36 plus 28, whatever it is, it is a positive number, which is 64. So when b square minus 4ac is greater than 0, we know that it cuts the curve at two points. When b square minus 4ac is less than 0, we know that it does not touch the curve. And third is when it is equal to 0, it will touch the curve at one point. Proceeding it a little to next step, we will introduce negative values as well. B square minus 4ac less than 0 means the curve is not touching. This can also look like this. What is the case? This is when a is positive and this is when a is negative. Smiley face, sad face. This is the only introduction which we left yesterday. When it is greater than 0, this would mean it intersects at two different points. A is positive, a smiley face. A is a negative, a sad face. And B square minus 4AC equal to 0 would mean it touches the curve at one point. A is positive, that means coefficient of x square and A is negative, which is again the coefficient of x square. Are things getting clear? Uh, I have a question. Yes. So when uh, B squared minus 4 C1 is equal to 0, there's only uh, one answer, right? Yes. So it can it can be either negative or positive. Yes, the answer could be negative or positive. The actual graph also contains the y-axis. So it may be intersecting at this place. So the answer will be positive. It may be intersecting at this point. The answer may be negative. Whatever the answer is, but the answer will be one. There will be only one root in the case when it is tangent. Okay. I also have a question. Yes. Are there only three possibilities for it to be greater than, less than, or equal to zero? One. Like in a question, could you get greater than or equal to zero? Yes, uh, there is greater than or equal to zero. There is one condition, only one condition. Are these three clear first? The words used will be no, 
real roots second will be does not touch in this second case words will be or the question will say two real roots or it will say roots or it will say roots are distinct in this last it will say it is a tangent for the last case which you just asked if the question says if roots are real there is nothing else this they're telling you so b square minus 4ac will be greater than and equal to zero because the question never tells you that if it is intersecting at two points or it is touching at one point so you may have different values you may have same value so b square minus 4ac is greater than equal to zero because the question says roots are real the question never says roots are real and distinct the question never says that roots are equal so this is the case you solve them mutually it will it will literally have no effect on your solution or working steps oh look at these question question number 2 find the values of k for which this has two real solutions the question clearly says that two so two real solutions would mean b square minus 4ac greater than 0 question number 3 says exactly one solution so that means equal to 0 given that question number 4 given that this s has equal roots again equal to 0 so these are the different words the question will use and when it only says real roots then you will use greater than and equal to look at this question number 5 it says no real solution so when there are no real solutions the discriminant is less than 0 let's try this question says no real roots and the question statement is 3x square minus 4x plus k is equals to 0 if the roots are not real b squared minus 4ac will be less than 0 b is minus 4 a is 3 c is k and it is less than 0 16 minus 12 g ये बेटे I'm sorry can you hear me now Yeah you were asking something B square minus 4ac less than 0 b is minus 4 a is 3 c is k and solving for k 4 3 times 4 3 times so k is greater than 4 by 3 in this case when k is greater than 4 by 3 roots are not real any confusion in this part
Try this question and find the value of t. Question number 3. 2x square minus 3x plus t. Please try this and share your answers. Uh, so can you show the other document where you did the other question? I just want to see the, the working one. Thank you. Um, I got my answer for the question. Yes, please share. Um, for that for t, I got t equals nine over eight. That's right. The question was two x square minus three x plus t is equals to zero. And the condition says that it has exactly one solution in that case b square minus 4ac is equal to 0 value of b is minus 3 value of a is 2 value of c is t 3 squared is 9 this is minus 8 t equals to 0 so this will be 9 equals 8 t and the answer is 9 by 8 is equals to t I'll share this book and I'll assign a small homework, which will be around 15 to 20 minutes task. You can do that in any hour of the day, but at least before tomorrow's class. Okay. All right. Questions will be easy, but at least to keep you in practice. 
So one would be related B square minus 4AC. The other would be sketching, completing square. And as we get the pace on, then we'll increase the uh, writing task. For now, it will be around 15 to 20 minutes task. Is there anything else you would like to ask? Questions? See you tomorrow then. Take care. Love is. Yes.